And our next regular here on Radio Free UK is Jake the Writer. This item was actually recorded before the EU referendum. But as it's subtitled, Be Happy, it couldn't be more appropriate. Today's podcast from retired travel journalist and author Jake the Writer comes in a slightly lighter vein when he attempts to pass on some force-fed culture in the form of one of his sailor yarns. We have to issue a public warning before you listen, because there might be some rather awful singing involved. If that thought frightens you, please switch off now. Core Bugger Janna Another sailor's yarn. It's time to swing the lamp to give you landlubbers some force-fed naval culture. A Janna, in naval terminology or jack-speak, is someone from the West Country, specifically Plymouth. It's believed to originate in Devonport Dockyard when talking to their workmate John. Tis pronounced Jan in Devonian, see? Rather like the workers in the Chatham Dockyards being known as Marmites, from colloquially talking estuary English about Marmites instead of my mates. As for ports as being known as Pompey, it's reputed to be from the Portuguese Bombaja, which two words mean good harbour. Also the origin of Bombay. Sorry, Mumbai. There was a yarn about an infamous Portsmouth lady of the night known as Pompey Lil, who reputedly, or perhaps that should be disreputably, had two false legs. Two Devonport ratings had removed her legs and hitched her up on the church railings, After having their wicked way with her, they'd walked off without paying, leaving her hanging. She was heard to berate the Matlows as, You bloody Janners are all the same. If you'd been proper Pompey men, you would have helped me down when you'd finished. I digress as usual. Once upon a time, when Nelson was a lad, I was a midshipman, an embryo officer and gentleman taking a run ashore in Weymouth. Our huge aircraft carrier, being too big to go alongside, was anchored out in the bay. All the Liberty men were ferried ashore using a naval MFV, that's a motor fishing vessel, as per standard operating practice. My shipmate and I, proving our suitability for gentleman status, went sightseeing in the lovely Dorset countryside, had one gin and tonic, and returned to catch the Liberty boat, as per our orders, at 2100 hours. Meanwhile, the remainder of the crew had promptly got themselves completely rat assed That's another naval term, meaning as drunk as skunks, on the local scrumpy, once they had discovered that it was only one shilling a pint. That's 5p in new money. There were quite a lot of merry sailors aboard the MFV, and they were singing their tribal shanty, the Janna song. As we approached the gangway, it was November, cold, dark, and blowing up for a gale. Imagine about 60 somewhat inebriated crewmen singing, Half a pound of flour and marge makes a lovely clacker. Just enough for you and me, call bugger Janna. Oh, how happy us will be when we get to the West Country, where the yogis grow on trees, call bugger Janna. Up to Camborne Hill we go, down to Elston Ferry. Come on, Janna, don't be late. Come on, Janari. Oh, how happy we will be when we get to the West Country, where the yogis grow on trees, called Bugger Janar. You make fast, I'll make fast, make fast the dinghy. You make fast, kiss my ass, make fast the dinghy. There are several more versions, but I'll spare you those. There were also us two young snotties, trying to look as though we weren't with them. The officer watch called down to the MFV's coxswain, take them round the harbour until they've learned to behave. Bastard, stupid sub-lieutenant. We fended off and took another trip around the bay. 
it started to rain, and then some bright spark decided that all officers are bastards, and set off an oxblood fire hose. This is a firefighting implement that pumps seawater through a barrel of oxblood, which when mixed with seawater produces a thick white foam. They aimed the phone at the two bloody officers, but also covered the vessel and everyone aboard with it. It was very cold, very wet and very slippery. In spite of this, as we came up the accommodation ladder for the second time, sixty voices began. Half a pound of flour and rice makes a lovely clacker. Just enough for you and I, call bugger Janner. This was followed by an apoplectic officer of the watch screaming at the coxswain to take them round again. And so it went on. Six trips around the harbour until about two in the morning. Cold and wet, bedraggled and by this time silent, we were allowed back on board. The only two to get it in the neck were my fellow midshipman and I. We were told in no uncertain terms that we ought to have known better. Oh, happy days. Don't worry, be happy, to quote Bob Marley. Everything will be all right. Now, I was quite worried when I recently read in a lad's magazine, it was in my barber's, honestly, 50 things that you should do before you die, and I discovered that I'd done them all but two. I found that a bit worrying, just two to go before I popped my clogs. And then I read on and found that the two that I had left were sodomy and Morris dancing. No way! How does it go? In every life we have some trouble. When you worry, you make it double. Don't worry, be happy. It wasn't a great bucket list anyway. Number 48 has to be a pain in the arse, and my dancing is worse than my singing. So that's that then. Just remember to vote leave on the 23rd of June and make it Independence Day and then we'll all be happy. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you again next week when I promise not to sing. Cheerio.